Uh, latest images that we have uh, coming in from the United Nations General Assembly session, the UN chief speaking. Let's cut across. It's raging across the country from air, land and sea. It must stop now. Russian missile and air bombardments have been pounding Ukrainian cities day and night. The capital, Kyiv, is encircled from all sides. In the face of the continuing attacks, Kyiv's three million residents are being forced to seek safety in their homes, improvised bomb shelters, and the city's subways. The Ukrainian government has distributed a meaningful number of arms to the population with the stated objective to participate in the defense of the country. According to UNHCR, half a million Ukrainians have fled across the country's borders. Although Russian strikes are reportedly largely targeting Ukrainian military facilities, we have credible accounts of residential buildings, critical civilian infrastructure, and other non-military targets sustaining heavy damage. This escalating violence, which is resulting in civilian deaths, including children, is totally unacceptable. Enough is enough. Soldiers need to move back to their barracks, and leaders need to move to peace. Civilians must be protected. International humanitarian and human rights law must be upheld. The sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders must be respected in line with General Assembly resolutions. Mr. President, we are facing a tragedy for Ukraine, but also a major regional crisis with potentially disastrous implications for us all. Yesterday, Russian nuclear forces were put on high alert. This is a chilling development. The mere idea of a nuclear conflict is simply inconceivable. Nothing can justify the use of nuclear weapons. Mr. President, we face what could easily become Europe's, Europe's worst humanitarian and refugee crisis in decades, with the numbers of refugees and internally displaced multiplying by the minute. I am grateful for the compassion, generosity, and solidarity of Ukraine's neighbors who are taking in those seeking safety. It is important that this solidarity is extended without any discrimination based on race, religion, or ethnicity. The neighboring countries will need all our support in the days and weeks to come. The United Nations will continue to assist with these efforts. Mr. President, on Saturday, I spoke with President Zelensky and assured him that the United Nations would not abandon the Ukrainian people and conveyed our determination to enhance humanitarian assistance. Even before the events of the past week, the UN was providing some three million people on both sides of the contact line with humanitarian assistance. The United Nations is now working 24 times 7 to access humanitarian needs and scale up the delivery of life-saving support to many more people desperate for protection and shelter, particularly women and children, elderly people, and those with disabilities. We are fully committed to staying and delivering for everyone affected by this deadly conflict across the country. Some of our personnel are expanding existing programs, and others are preparing new operations to get help to those who need it fast. I want to highlight three concrete actions. First, I've allocated 20 million US dollars from the Central Emergency Response Fund to support emergency operations along the contact line in the eastern oblasts of Donetsk and Luhansk and in other parts of the country. This will allow us to help more vulnerable people get the basics, shelter, food, water, and health care as soon as possible. Second, I've appointed Amin Awad as the UN Crisis Coordinator for Ukraine. He will liaise with the government and with all relevant actors on the ground, supported by the resident and humanitarian coordinator and the UN country team. At the same time, we are bringing together partners in and outside the country and surging personnel into the country. Third, tomorrow we will launch two coordinated emergency appeals for Ukraine and the region. One that addresses escalating humanitarian needs inside the country, including rising internal displacement, and another that responds to the needs of people crossing international borders to seek refuge in countries neighboring Ukraine. As we ramp up our efforts, 
It is essential that the safety and security of UN and associated personnel in Ukraine are protected in accordance with international law and that humanitarian access to vulnerable people and communities is guaranteed. I call on all sides to uphold their obligations to allow freedom of movement of humanitarian personnel and to facilitate safe, rapid and unimpeded passage of humanitarian relief. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.